FMT Nation, we are back. Nation, in today's video, I want to discuss and take a look at a map that is really important to the future capacity boosting of the T-Mobile 5G network. And I know a lot of you are in tune with this, your T-Mobile customers. You want to see the network be better, more, more capacity, faster speeds, more resilience, all that. And, um, you know, C-band 3.7, uh, the 3700 megahertz frequency is something we have yet to see T-Mobile actually build to. Uh, so on the on the map pictured here, uh, you'll see all the different locations where T-Mobile actually has the asset. All right, for those of you that aren't aware, 3700 is a mid-band frequency, and Verizon and AT&T leverage it very extensively, and it is the capacity layer of, of primary use for those networks. So for T-Mobile, it's going to be secondary. For the other guys, it's primary. Uh, but the bandwidth is... Is pretty rich uh there's a lot of bandwidth for at&t and verizon for t-mobile it's more supplemental and you know if you look at where it's located you're you're looking at big cities where you're looking at states that have high population densities and you have a lot of folks right so uh, i see new york along the eastern seaboard you see you know dc uh most of florida right and then obviously in some of the more populated parts of texas California, I see Vegas down there at the bottom of Nevada, you know, Phoenix, you, you, and even like here, look, look at Northern Ohio and into like the Detroit, Michigan area, right? Uh, even into Pittsburgh. And these are county level, right? So for the most part, it looks like it's 40 megahertz in most of these areas. I see 160 megahertz location, uh, although I'm not really sure about that county, but it looks like it's right on the edge of New York, uh, New York State, and kind of I don't know if that's uh, if that's Vermont. I, I can't really tell. Uh, maybe it's Ma no, it's not Massachusetts. But anyways, uh, just looking at some of the locations, right? I see Chicago, right? These are big cities, and these are places where T-Mobile typically struggles at times dealing with capacity. They have intense market share, and you know they're they don't really build small cells to scale, right? They rely more on the macro grid. But hope is not lost. We just got uh, recent disclosures from T-Mobile at their earnings conference about C-band, this frequency, and the build to it. So what they're doing is they're playing it close, right? They're, they're not really telling people exactly where and how they're going to build it, but they say they are, all right? So we'll see if that happens. They just sold off the 3.45 gigahertz, so they're not doing anything with that. Uh, but this is going to be the supplemental boost that some folks may be looking for. I'll be honest with you guys. When I look at Ohio, for example, where they have the C-band, Columbus, um, you know, Cleveland, I see Toledo, and then going into Michigan there, and then Pittsburgh, those areas, T-Mobile's not slow. They have tons of capacity. They're very fast, so they're not in a, a rush to build there. I, in fact, there were some tower sites that were converted, old sprint conversion sites and retentions over the last year or two, and T-Mobile could have easily put up C-band, and they didn't right uh it could be a combination of waiting for gear that could you know uh be deployed for it and then maybe an additional frequency so we're talking like radios and antennas could be some of that in play could just be cost they're gonna have to climb up later and do it i don't know but they're not slow here right they're not right they're, they're it's them verizon at and are all very fast they're not slow but there's versions of this like in southern california and nevada where their market share is ultra high and they're going to have to build this sooner rather than later. And in these places, T-Mobile tells us their network grid is built for it, meaning it's tight, right? So the frequency won't have any problem reaching from site to site. Uh, and in my experience, as long as you're putting up massive MIMO radio gear, the C-band propagation is very good. It is very much just like AWS and PCS, which have frequencies between like 1.9 gigahertz and you know 2.1 or in the case of aws right 1.7 1 and then 2.1 so those are a couple of things we're going to be monitoring is these locations take a look right i think there's atlanta in there i i see miami right parts of texas i think houston uh you know the la and the bay area these are parts of the country that could use the capacity i'm looking at the tri-state area new york philly boston uh, i'm seeing some of that in there right? T-Mobile's got some extra spectrum, right? They, they spent a pretty penny on it, right? Per megahertz pop, they spent the most for C-band. 
uh, but they'll be deploying it because they need to, right? And the fact that they've been sitting on it, I think, is rather frustrating because we as the American people use these networks and want to benefit from the auction of these airwaves. And I think the FCC would be wise to set a precedent and apply pressure to T-Mobile to build this spectrum according to the terms of the auction. And, and we benefit from it, of course. And, and maybe it's tied to the home internet. Maybe they want to see gateways that they, you know, that have the compatibility. I, I don't know what the what's kept them from building this out sooner. It could be CapEx related, could be gear related. There's all these different factors, but there clearly is upside and T-Mobile just needs to build it. We'll see how and when they do this over the course of the next couple of years. I think we'll start to see it more. All right, what do you guys think? Make your prediction. Tell me your thoughts and opinions on this. The T-Mobile C-Band build. How will it go? Sound off in the comment section below. Y'all, voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.